Hey everybody, this is Game Dev Luke and welcome to my very first tutorial series. In this series, we're gonna look at a Borderlands inspired weapon generator. And Borderlands is known for making a gazillion guns. So this is gonna be uh, part one of a series. Probably we're gonna make around four parts in total. Today's part one, let's start by diving right into our design. Enjoy. First thing we need to do is identify parts that can be swapped, like barrel, for example. So we want to have modular parts. If you take a look at this, here I have colorized parts of the gun I think are modular. And this way we have six different parts. And if we change these with our script, with our algorithm, then we can generate unique looking guns. So if we take these modular parts and we give all of these parts a name, then you have the following. We have a barrel over here, a magazine, a handle, a stock, a scope, and a body. So that is how the algorithm will work. It will just pick a random part from the list that we have. So let's say we have a list of six barrels, six bodies, six scopes, six stocks, six handles, six magazines. Then the system is just gonna randomly pick one of each and then try to snap them together. You can generate a lot of unique looking weapons. So what's very important for our system is that we're gonna use a system like this. And here you can see that you have the body and the body has sockets. And these sockets will be empty game objects in Unity. And in these sockets, we will spawn the designated parts. So let's say we have the socket over here. This is gonna be the barrel socket and in code we're just gonna spawn the barrel at this socket and we're gonna do that for the rest as well because everybody can be unique in size and shape we have to set this up for every body that we have so if we have six different bodies then we need to make six different prefabs in unity and set these sockets by hand that's all so these are our sockets, very important. And then we have our pivots. Now we're looking at the other parts, the parts that are being snapped on top of the centerpiece, which is the body. And as you can see here, the pivots are in different positions. So for the barrel, they're on the left side because the barrel needs to snap to the body at his left side. Same goes for the grip and the magazine. They are snapped at the bottom of the body. So their pivot needs to be at the top. The stock here on the left will be snapped on the left part of the body. So so its pivot needs to be on the right side. Finally, we have the scope. Scope has to be snapped on top of the body, so the, its pivot needs to be at the bottom. So once we have our body in place, and we have our socket set up, and we have the pivots in the correct positions, then we can uh, tell our script to start spawning, or well, to pick a random part from a list, spawn it at the designated socket, and then it should look like this. So then each part should be snapped on top of the centerpiece, which is the body, in a correct way, and then you have a unique looking gun. If you look at this image, it doesn't matter which kind of barrel I'm snapping at this socket because it's gonna be at the exact same position, so it's always gonna look okay. Now that we know our system, I'm gonna go into Maya, which is a 3D modeling package. And as you can see here, I've made two very simple looking guns. It's just for demonstration purposes. Of course, it has to look a lot better when you wanna make a game out of this. But the technique is in place. We have a barrel, we have a body, we have some sort of scope, we have a magazine, we have a grip, and we have a stock. And the same goes for this one as well. And if you were looking closely, then you can see that I have already set up the pivots as well. So the barrel, has the pivot on the right side, the stock has the pivot on the left side so it can snap on the body like this. And the scope over here can snap like that, the magazine can snap like this, and the grip can snap like that. So that's what I did in Maya. I'm not going to show you how to model things in this tutorial, but um, yeah, as you can see, the shapes are really simple and that should doable for you if you follow some 3D modeling tutorials. Now I'm going to export these, I'm going to bring them to Unity, and then we're going to start working on making our weapon generator in Unity. So we're in Unity and as you can see I have my weapon parts model here and it has all these different types of weapon parts. So what we need to do now is set up our bodies in a way that they have sockets. So I'm gonna drag my models in here. Well, they're still very simple. I'm gonna break the prefab because we don't need this prefab. We're gonna make our own prefab. So I'm gonna unpack the prefab. I'm gonna look for the body. So this is body one and body two. And I'm gonna make prefabs out of these. First I'm gonna create a folder. Prefabs. I'm gonna drag body in here and body two in here. Then I'm opening body number one, and this is just a simple looking block. And now I'm gonna make empty game objects. And if you use a Unity shortcut, you can use Control Shift N. I've made a new game object. You can also just use right, right mouse button, create empty. Now we're simply gonna make the sockets. So this is gonna be our barrel socket. 
copy paste this is gonna be our stock socket scope socket magazine socket and the grip socket then we have all our sockets and now it's a matter of positioning them well so the barrel socket needs to be at the front of the gun and in the middle in the middle and at the front now stock is at the end of the gun there we go scope on top magazine is going to be at the bottom and then a little bit at the front and the grip is going to be at the bottom and a little bit at the back so this is our first body i'm going to go to the second and we're going to do the same Now we have our two bodies with sockets ready. Now we're gonna make a new script. And we call our script the weapon generator. And of course we are very organized. So we're gonna put this in a folder called scripts. Almost, there we go. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna check if I am pressing the space bar on my keyboard. And then I'm going to call a function called generate weapon. Generate weapon. And here we want to spawn our body to start with. So I'm going to make a new list of game objects. And it's going to be uh, called body parts. And here we're going to get a random body from the list and instantiate it. So getting a random item from a list is something we're going to do for all our parts. So I'm going to write a separate function for this, uh, which is called get random parts. It takes in a list because uh, we want to give it the list and then it should get a random game object from this list. And it returns a game object, as you can see here. So we can get a random number which is random.range from zero to the list that we gave dot count. So this way it's gonna look in this list, it's gonna get a number from zero to the max of this list and because this is an int it doesn't count the last one. And then we're just simply returning the random number and I see I made a typo. So what we have right now is um, we're getting a random number. So if our list is too big, then it's going to be zero or one. Then it's going to return the list with zero or one. So we get a random part from the list. So here we want to do a game object. Random body is get random parts. And then we want to give our body parts list. What we want to do then is we want to instantiate it. Instantiating means we want to spawn this body into the Unity world. So what we want to spawn is our random body, which we just got from our get random part function. And let's spawn it just at um, the 000 place in, uh, in the world. Save this and let's see if this works so far. Gonna make a new object here, call it weapon generator. I'm going to throw my new script on here. It's going to have a body parts list. And I'm going to throw my two prefabs in here. I'm going to press play. And then I'm going to press space. And in the scene, we see that it spawned a body clone. Let's press space a couple of times. Another body, body, body two. So now it's generated another body. And if I press a couple times, you see that it's pretty random. So that's exactly what we need. So the next step is we want to spawn the other parts as well. After spawning the body, we want to spawn a barrel, a scope, a stock, and a magazine, and a handle. We could copy paste this. And we have six parts, so I'm going to copy paste it six times. And we're going to make more lists because we need to have a list for each part that we want to randomize. 
So this is going to be barrel parts. This is going to be stock parts, scope parts, magazine parts, grip parts. Now we're going to replace this. So this is going to be barrel parts, stock parts, magazine parts, scope parts, and grip parts. Random barrel, random stock, random scope, and random grip. Copy paste heaven. But oh, we're getting there, almost there. All right, so now instead of just the body, we're spawning a random barrel and we're using this function again, the get random part which we give a list and from this list it returns us a random game object and now we have to fill these lists of course and i'm going to show a little trick here i'm going to press the lock over here in the top right and now if i click another game object it still shows the weapon generator inspector here so what i can do now is you know highlight multiple objects here and then drag them in the list at once instead of going doing it one by one i can now just highlight multiple things and then uh, throw it in the list immediately and that's a little sweet trick that saves some work especially if these lists are getting big like if we would use six different barrels or a hundred different barrels you don't want to put them all one by one you can just do a trick like this all the lists are set up now let's press space and see if we got something well i see something that looks like a gun already and let's see, we have body 2, barrel 2, stock 2, magazine 2, scope 1, and handle 2. I'm going to delete all of this and generate again. Body 1, barrel 1, stock 2, magazine 2. Alright, so things looking pretty okay. But as you can see, if I highlight everything, you see that everything is like inside of each other. And that's not something we want. We want the barrel to be aligned to the body like this and the stock to be aligned to the body like that and so on and for this we need to use our sockets which we already made on our body prefabs if you remember and look at this we have our sockets ready we somehow need to tell our script that um, the barrel needs to be spawned here instead of in the middle and if you go back to our script you can see that we're telling the barrel right now to spawn at factor 3.0 which is the center point of our scene and that's something we don't want we want to spawn our barrel at the position of the barrel socket so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new script called weapon body and i'm going to put this on our on our bodies one two then we're going to open weapon body and here i'm going to make public transform for each socket, I'm going to make a public transform. So we're going to have a barrel socket. We're going to have a scope socket. We're going to have a magazine socket. We're going to have a grip socket. A stock socket. All right, save. And I don't need to do anything with this. I'm going to go back to my uh, prefab. So I'm going to open body and now I'm going to fill these empty transforms. So the barrel socket, I'm going to drag the barrel socket in. Scope socket is going to be this one. Stock socket is going to be that one. Grip socket is going to be this one. Magazine, this one. So now this script knows which socket is which. I'm going to do it for body two as well. And again, yeah, this is some uh, work you have to do by hand, but uh, because everybody is unique, this is the only stuff we actually have to do by hand. And that's, uh, I think, totally worth it at the end. So now we've set up our sockets. We're going to go back. Instead of spawning the barrel here, we want to spawn the barrel at our socket. So before we can do this, we need to have a reference to the weapon body. And the weapon body has a reference to the socket. So after spawning the body, we want to get the script weapon body from it. So first we're going to save this instantiated body so now it's being saved the body that's being instantiated is now saved in this variable ins body so after it's it has spawned in the world we can get its weapon body 
Ins body, get component, weapon body. So now that we have a reference to weapon body, we also have reference to all the sockets. As you can see here, weapon body dot socket returns our sockets that we have. Now that we have this, we could just to see if it works. We could try this. Okay, instead of spawning at factor three zero, maybe you should spawn at the barrel socket dot position. Saving this, going back, generating another gun. And here we go. As you can see, our barrel is now being spawned at the front of the body. And as you can see, it does not align properly. So we have to fix our socket, which we will do in a bit. But this is exactly what we want. We want our barrel not to spawn here, but we want it to spawn where it just spawned. So that works. But there is some stuff that we need. To, we also want to set the parent because now if I generate my weapon, you see that they're all here in the scene. What you actually want to do is that you have your body and beneath the barrel socket, you have your barrel. This is much cleaner because, well, the barrel is located at the socket, so might as well be a child of the socket. And so it's, the gun is going to be one game object with childs. All right, so we also want to set the parent. So to do this, we also need to save this part as a game object, and then we can say, okay, instantiated barrel, ins barrel, transform parent is the weapon body dot barrel socket. What we're doing with the barrel right now is we're getting a random barrel from the list, then we're spawning this barrel and we're saving the spawned barrel in this variable, instantiated barrel. And the instantiated barrel dot transform dot parent is going to be the weapon body dot barrel socket. So this means that the spawn barrel is going to be parented under barrel socket. Let's see if this works. Just press space. And then we can see that the barrel socket has a little arrow, which means there it has a child. And here we go. We can see that our barrel is now childed beneath the barrel socket. So we could do this for all our other parts, but then we have a lot of d duplicate code and duplicate code is a bad thing. So we're gonna make a little function that does this, what we're doing right here, then a little bit more generic so that we can call it for each part. So we're gonna call this spawn weapon part. And again, we're gonna give it a list because we want to give the list of parts and we give it a transform socket which is the socket it needs to be spawned at and here we, we are gonna say okay game objects random part get a random part using the parts list whatever parts list was giving here we're passing it on to the get random part then we want to spawn this random part and we want to save it as a variable. So we're going to say game object instantiate part is instantiate random part, which is the one we just got from the list. And we want to spawn it at the socket, which we are giving here as a parameter. So we want to spawn it at the socket dot transform that position. And we can also use the socket transform dot rotation. And then we're also going to parent it. So inspart.transform.parent is the socket. So now what we have written for the barrel is a little bit more generic for each part because we're actually doing the same that, that you saw here. But here, here we had to use barrel and barrel socket and that kind of stuff. But here it's more generic because we're passing on the parts list and the socket it needs to be uh, parented under or positioned at spawn weapon part with barrel parts and the weapon body barrel socket. So this can now go because it is replaced by this spawn weapon part. We give the barrel parts list, which is this list, which contains uh, all types of different barrels. And we tell it where to spawn. And this is the barrel socket. And we got this from the weapon body, which was just instantiated as well. Then we go into here. It's going to get a random part from the list. Then it's going to spawn that random part and it's going to spawn it at the socket. And it's going to parent it under the socket. So all these things can go now. And we can just copy paste this and then change the right list and use the correct socket.
And now it should work. So if I save this, I go back to Unity, press spacebar, and there we go. We have a gun that is properly aligned. Let's delete it and spawn another one. Or let's move to the side so we can see it's actually random. Yeah, you can see it has a different body, a different magazine, and a different scope. Spawn another one. Looks very similar like this one, but it has a different uh, stock and a different magazine. So as you can see now, we have random looking guns. They are attached to each other. Well, there are some gaps as you can see, but we can fix this by fixing our sockets. And here you can see that we have three different looking guns. So let's go back to our prefabs and fix our sockets. This one looks fine. This one looks fine. Probably it's this one. Yeah, there we go. There's a little gap here. Okay. Needs to be aligned with the mesh, of course. And now it's properly aligned, as you can see. That is basically the start of our system. So we have a list for each of our different types of parts. In update, we're checking get key down, uh, space key, gen generate weapon, which is this function. Here we're spawning a random body by using the get random part function, which just returns a random item from the list. And the list is body parts, so it's gonna return a random body part. We're spawning it at the center of the world. And then we're getting the weapon body script that's on there. And we need this because we need to know the sockets of this body. We need to have a reference to these sockets. And then we're spawning uh, each part like this. So spawn weapon part, we're giving it the list of uh, parts it needs to spawn from. And we're giving it the correct socket it needs to spawn at. So barrel socket, scope socket, and so on. Uh, the spawn weapon part gets a random part again. So if this is going to be the barrel list, it's going to get a random barrel from the list, which is going to be in here. And it's going to be spawned in the world. It's going to use the socket position and rotation to spawn at. So at this position and rotation, it's going to spawn in the world and it's going to be parented under the socket. And this socket was, we got this socket from the weapon body. And that's basically everything. Then we have weapon body and weapon body is just five different sockets that we've set up in the prefab like this so empty game objects there are nothing else and they're positioned at the right place just as i described in our design all right so now with our system done it might not look like much yet but i'm gonna show you that it's actually pretty working pretty well um, i have used this pack in my examples you might have seen them this is the Sinti Polygon Apocalypse Pack. I'm not sponsored in any way, I just really like what they do. So what was interesting for me was when I saw this, I saw all these weapons and then I saw the next screenshot and it showed that all these weapon parts are modular. And this is exactly what we needed. So I'm gonna insert the Polygon Pack inside my project and don't not change any code and show you that our system works very well. So here we go. I have three bodies that look very different from each other and of course just like before we have to set up sockets and that's actually all we need to do so I'm gonna shift select all these bodies I'm gonna add the weapon body script to it and then for each body I'm gonna make a prefab out of this for all of them we're gonna make a little prefab And for each prefab, we are adding all the sockets again and then setting all the references to our weapon body script. And once we've done that, our system will work. And then we can generate a couple hundreds or thousands of pretty looking guns. Okay, so our body is set up. Now we're gonna reset the list. Resetting the list. Press our lock and now we can just drag all these bodies at the same time in there. And then I'm gonna throw in some other stuff. Scopes, barrels, handles are the grips, loaders which are the magazines, and stocks which are stocks. Press play, press spacebar. Hey, there we go. We have a decent random looking gun. And read another one. Looks very different, very cool. So what I'm gonna do now is add some code that destroys the previous weapon, 
So if previous weapon is not zero, then destroy previous weapon. I'm gonna make a game pick over here, previous weapon. Previous body is instantiated body because that's the thing that's being instantiated and is the parent of all other parts. Space. Hey, we have a gun. Tiny gun with a big scope. Hey, we have a tiny gun with a very big magazine and a small scope. Hey, we have an assault rifle. And I can keep going like this for a long time. And if we go back to our weapon generator, well, you can do the math. We have three bodies, which can have six barrels, four stocks, six scopes, six loaders and six handles. So probably that's already like a couple thousand different unique looking guns. So, and as you can see, we didn't change any code. Our system just worked immediately by just swapping around some models. Uh, we did have to make the bodies again and place the sockets properly. Because we did that, now we have unique looking guns and we can generate for a very long time. All right, so that was part one of my very first online video tutorial series. So we've made a Borderlands inspired weapon generator. Just part one. In part two, we're gonna add statistics to each gun part. So we're gonna add things like damage, accuracy, reload speed, rate of fire, and we're gonna show them all in a nice weapon card in the UI, in the user interface. I hope you learned something new. If you did not, then stick around for part two. Hopefully you're gonna learn something new there. As always, please like, subscribe, let me know what you thought about this tutorial series in the comments. I'll be there as well. Thank you and have a nice day.